hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. Well, I'm at the McDonald's. The good McDonald's, too. <laughs> and so today there was low diet Coke. And I felt bad because there was two nurses and one just wanted to get a diet Coke at lunch. Yes, no diet Coke. <laughs> God, that's bad. And she wasn't going for um, Diet Dr. Pepper. I I, I, look, I got Diet Dr. I got lids at a straw, so I'm not bitching today. And there was, <laughs> there was a guy in there and he bought a sandwich and he said, can I get some Asian sauce? And uh, so they gave, they didn't put any in the bag. And then they gave him one and he said, well, can I get another one? And, and they said, no. He goes, even though I bought two sandwiches, like one, one sauce, damn it. Don't be, don't be a resource hog. <laughs> and so you might be going, how are they getting, gonna get away with this crap? Well, it's the China thing. In China, I mentioned to you that the wage was very, very low. And uh, and so they said, if you don't like it, 997 other people will. And I thought, yeah, that is really true. Just like McDonald's, if you don't like it, we have Diet Dr. Pepper. So you guys, it has to be accepted. It is a trade war. And, it, and most wars last 10 years. This is only like year two. So at the beginning of the war was the coronavirus. So do you honestly think we're in a war? Uh, they managed to give us a virus, a countrywide virus, that that is it. There's going to be no other attacks of sicknesses. There will be. And so... Um, what I'm doing is I'm continuing with the... Uh, I'm continuing with the precautions to masks and socially distancing for 10 years if I have to. I would love to go somewhere, but that is stupid right now. So, okay, yesterday I, I did housework all day long. That's all I did was housework and yard work. Wow, that was awful. But the house is, is starting to come around. Uh, it's like... Um, clearing a forest you know you start getting to you start getting the forest cleared you can take it one tree at a time this is what a chemistry teacher told me one time or you can just clear the forest uh, i have to be careful because in my forest i have ebay inventory i have uh, Etsy inventory, I have swap meet inventory, I have food storage, I have mountains of clothes. You saw some of the clothes I sold. So, you know, you don't want to just go ripping through the house because, you know, there's some value to the stuff. So, okay, so now about the trade war, we're stockpiling food. And I've been watching food hauls purposely. And a lot of the food banks give people storable food and that's what you want because your food isn't going to spoil and you're going to have food next week in six months. If there's some left, good. You're creating a stockpile. So we're in a trade war. And what that means is we're, we're vying back and forth with goods and services with, um, with currency, with uh, anything that we trade. You know, basically it's like a money war because your goods and service convert into money, right? Which is wealth. We're, this is a wealth war. Some of the wars are territorial wars, like the Afghanistan war. That was like a territory that we were trying to help them protect. So, uh, one of the things we've seen is this storage container issue. I mean, this transport container issues. Okay, um, I have a fly in here. Uh, like the another uh, thing that that is is kind of scary is the uh, trucking that goes across the uh, United States 24 hours a day. 
and the cargo ships. So what's happening is now there's a shortage. Suddenly there's a shortage. There's not a shortage. There's a shortage of availability because that's an attack on our ability to transport, receive, and send uh, goods and services. So when we can't do that efficiently, it, it affects our ability to uh, buy and sell. Okay, the evergreen blockage of the Suez Canal, that accidental and on purpose blockage by the you know who, uh, in the uh, Muslim religion, they say if Egypt falls, watch out for the Mideast. So when something happens in, in Egypt, I go, uh-oh. So the Egyptians, you know, the, the, the uh, Mideastern people have controlled the trade routes, have controlled the uh, oil, have controlled the wealth down through the generations. So uh, this storage container thing is not, there's no end to this either. It's part of the vying the war. Uh, one of the things that was kind of interesting, I love James Casbolt. I don't agree with everything he says, but I do agree with a lot of the things he said. And he said the way he was raised is to expect endless fighting and endless war with small periods of rest. So where was the rest? We had the Afghanistan and now we got the trade war. There's no rest, but there is like small periods of rest sometimes. So the, the, the transport of goods and services and the import and export. We even had some disputes with um, with uh, Britain over the luxury items. They wanted to apply a tariff to us. And recently, and President Biden said, well, we will apply a tariff to your luxury items, your purses and stuff. So they had to back down. And another thing to remember about um, the European Union is that's 560 million people as opposed to our 340 million. So there's massive populations in comparison to the Americans. So that needs to be remembered, but um, we're just gonna have to rely on American ingenuity. And President Biden does have tons of experience. Okay, so now, so we're looking at the transport of goods and services. And we're saying to ourselves, okay, we've already seen disruptions. Also, the you guys, the toilet paper is getting scouty. <laughs> About time for me to go to Walmart. I When I'm stockpiling toilet paper quickly, I go to Walmart and buy the cheap Walmart um, toilet paper for like $17. And I just keep buying a, one of the big cases each day until I think it's safe. None of this one roll of toilet paper stuff. Okay, so another thing is the ability to store goods and services, literally. Okay, so now if giant rains come, floods come, storms come, tornadoes come, uh, the, the, well, for one thing, the food could be wiped out or the crops could be destroyed. So at the same time we have this this uh, trade war, we also have the grand solar minimum. Okay, the politicians are calling it like uh, weather events or something that doesn't sound so bad as a mini ice age. So the cold countries like Russia, like China, some parts of Europe are going to be greatly affected. Northern America, Canada, I love Canada. Hi, everybody from Canada who follows me. <laughs> I love Europe too. This is just such a bummer. I, I said, oh, I, I can't wait until I can retire and I can travel. Okay, now think about banks. What do banks do? Banks store money and they pay you a little interest to store your wealth. 
and I heard something, um, I heard something disturbing. The banks are running out of money. I go, what? So, you know, we want to keep some cash with us. Uh, I went, I think it was this McDonald's, and they didn't want to take my card. And luckily, I scrounged around in my purse, and I found a dollar. <laughs> That's going to be bad news, you guys, if you don't have any cash and gas. Make sure you have gas. So the banks, and another thing is, is credit, is stored, stored wealth. You know, you're buying, you're paying interest to use it. But that can be cut off. Just like these, um, these transport containers can be cut off. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the ability of the powers be to cut off the resources. To, to attack the resources, kind of. Okay, now real estate. Okay, I heard that the uh, real estate is starting to crumble in China. So one of the things we're watching is real estate. Now, here in San Diego, they say the, the average price of a house is about a million dollars. Uh, up here in this area, it's $1.5 million, the average price of a house. I work all the time if you live in California. In a recession like this, the trick is to earn your way through the recession. You can't save your way through inflation. That's a bit tricky. The stock market is a storage of wealth. And then as it increases, you're paid by this increase in prosperity. Bitcoin is like a storage of wealth. And as more people buy and invest, it goes up. But the thing that's thing about Bitcoin and credit is that's digital and it can be wiped out in a second. In, in Bitcoin, uh, if one of these big players pulls out like China, it could collapse the entire Bitcoin. I buy a little Bitcoin, but not too much because, you know, I, if I lose it all, it's not going to be a big deal then people store their wealth in land in farmland in all kinds of land and um we had like and on your land there could be lumber there could be um crops there could be real estate so that's another storage of land and it's getting harder and harder for the average person to afford 1.5 million dollars for a house and then we have online business now so it's very hard to pay like in these strip malls are very expensive okay the bonds is gone i used to work in shopping centers and for um you have to have I think it's 5,000 car traffic a day for a, a um, grocery store. Uh, they have Smart and Final now where the Vons used to be. And so the what we're doing is we're moving to an online market. Okay, that is fine, except for there is control of these markets. Uh, Canadian Prepper had his online stores you know, cut. And so um, the AI can determine for whatever reason that your store is undesirable. Say one thing that could happen is undesirables could be purchasing or you could be purchasing from undesirables and they want to cut off their commerce. So they cut off you. And he had a horrible time, but he finally got to start. You can watch his videos. I subscribe to him. He makes a lot of good points, but he has this online store. So as you know, the online stores are a bit dangerous because, you know, they can just cut you or they don't feed your stuff or whatever. So I brought something to show you. One of the things I sell on Etsy. Yes. Will some girl buy this? Yeah, she probably will. This is cute. It's a, a sun. It's a little glasses case. These are vintage. 
so my stuff isn't a weapon. My stuff isn't, you know, like building things that explode, <laughs> stuff like that. So I'm pretty safe. Um, I wanted to mention two things to you guys. I've been using this stuff on my old dry arms. This is cheap, like a dollar each. It, they're looking okay. They're never going to look young. That's okay. So, uh, let's see. So, what's happening is the big business is taking over. And it's harder and harder to do business as a little guy. I know a woman, though. Um, her son... This was a long time ago, but this is an example. Her son would secure like these old tires and then he uh, sold them at the swap meet, but he was also interested in race cars. And so pretty soon he built up his tire, tire business and they were really living the good life there for a while. But one of the things I plan on doing is like um, a traveling salesman business at the swap meet. Uh, today it was only 83, but uh, a couple days ago, it was 108, so, you know, anything involving outdoors and that kind of heat is, forget it. I mean, I would do it if I had to. So, um, you know, the online businesses, the real estate, uh, massive amounts. They're say one of the reasons um, the real estate is getting so expensive is, uh, I heard, I think this is probably true, that some very wealthy people are moving to uh, San Diego and purchasing things. Like, you know, people, like poor people go, I think I'll buy myself a purse and a pair of shoes and, you know, I'll buy myself a coat. Not them. I think I'll buy myself a few nice houses today. <laughs> so another thing is um, uh, in um, Florida, I noticed like they have mobile homes, you know, and you buy the mobile home fairly fully furnished. I thought I like that, but wealthy people buy their really nice houses, including the furniture. So um, I've been doing home decor on a budget, and home decor is one thing I'll be selling. I didn't plan on doing that. I just bought a lot of home decor and it sold very easily that I didn't want after I bought it. And it sold very easily at the swap meet. So I go, oh, that's a good thing to sell. And cans of food and plants. So I'm working on that. Okay, so now about clothes. I try to save the best for last. Okay, I've been hearing this stuff online. Um, JFK Jr. will be the vice president when President Trump comes back. Okay, JFK Jr. is dead, right? So if, if he comes back as the vice president now, he is a clone, okay? And now there's all this mention of the Kennedys again. Like uh, when Governor Newsom wasn't recalled he made mention of of john kennedy robert kennedy so the kennedys were elitists and uh they were an interesting bunch like it was a little bit unhealthy for people to be closely associated with them like marilyn monroe like the girl that was killed when the car crashed off the bridge. I mean, we could go on and on and on. So, you know, also, you know, with some of these elitists, quite a few, you see uh, terrible hangings, hangings of people, um, all kinds of stuff. You go, well, there's such a small amount of the population but they have a huge amount of these deaths. So that's, it's, we're looking for that kind of stuff because that is suspect cloning. We're looking for cloning. We're not being, we're not being dense when it comes to the cloning. Okay, they have admitted to agitating the egg of a cow and inserting human DNA and they have said that after 120 days they destroyed the egg but 
I spent years doing science and scientists are very inquisitive. And it is my opinion, and I think they've also uh, managed to insert, I'd say the pigs would be the easiest because in some, some circles, it was said that pigs were uh, some kind of humans long time ago, like in the evolutionary thing. So anyway, it is my opinion that some of these creatures were not destroyed and they exist now on the world and the clones exist now on the wor world. And there's been huge amounts of clones and they exist with us side by side. So now why this cloning? Well, it has been postulated and I don't know that it's true. It's just something I heard that it is easier to demonize a clone for some reason. So we get these clones of famous people and who are these famous people? We don't really know. Uh, some Christian religions say there's gonna be a massive amount of release of demons. Where would these demons go? Well, they could go in animals, they could go in humans. And this is interesting about the Egyptians. Uh, you know, in their hier hieroglyphics, there's part human and part animal beings. Now, um, and then, you know, there's, um, I am very interested in Atlantis, the lost city. But I think, that, and another thing is these mentions in real time. Real time, like right now, okay, are you talking about a spiritual realm? That's in real time too, it's just a realm. And I think that's a possibility where the Atlantis um, exists. So we're, we're not being dense about this. We're not saying, okay, I want to be, um, I want to be part of this realm. No, I do not want to be part of this realm because in this realm could be demons. Also there, I have heard there are demons called mimics that mimic a human. Like when you think you're talking to your dead relative, you're not. And so we need to uh, beware. And this may be how a lot of people are faked out in the end of times. And I look into various um, various religions, seeing what they have to say on the subject of the end of times. So now, so we're... And also um, the AI, the power of the AI, we're starting to see that. Is it possible that there could be AI enhanced people and animals? Yes. Uh, some of these, um, I am very suspicious. You know, these, um, these dogs the military has, and there's a picture of one with President Trump and the dog who was a hero. And I'm looking at that dog going, are you, a hundred percent dog or are you enhanced those dogs are pretty sharp okay i mean i'm not saying it is but you know we might be moving in that direction okay so and the ai knows all these there's huge data gate data collecting bases and then they can make predictions about what is gonna happen. I also wanna um, mention the demigod thing. You will see evidence of a demigod. A demigod is a fallen angel, generally. And I mean, they can, some of them can be moving freely, like in fashion houses, in like, um, I think they're a lot to do with the um, some of these Asian empires, um, and they freely admit the gods walk in their palaces. That was the feng shui idea. They would create these places, like I'm doing the feng shui, but I'm, my feng shui is not fabulous enough to um, attract a demigod, thank God. <laughs> but it sure is getting nice since I've been doing it. So you have to spotlessly clean your house, get rid of everything broken, damaged, or soiled, which I'm doing within reason. And it does start getting nice. I did it years and years ago, but it takes a lot of time. 
and I was doing it yesterday in the yard and it's looking good. Okay, so now back to the food storage. Not my, well, there was my dad and then there was my grandmother and on the other side there was my mother and then there was the grandparents and they would, and they would accumulate food to last them for a whole year. But since we have stopped doing this, and why would they do this? They would do this so they would not starve before they could grow more crops or get the cattle to market. And it, and it required a lot of labor. So if you start stockpiling food, even by little by little, it requires a lot of labor. You've got to get it. You've got to figure out what to do with it. And this is one of the things that causing me so much pain in my uh, cleaning. So one of the things, you know, you need to store um merchandise that you could convert into um, some kind of exchange of money rather than working for someone who can exchange you at any time for someone else and live in places that are trustworthy and safe. So, uh, but the main reason you want to uh, store food is so that you won't starve. So you won't run out. And even if you're poor at this time in the U.S., you can get food from the storage, food storage and food banks and store it up in your house. And then if you don't need it, if you, if this is why I store cans. Um, oh, I wanted to mention one thing about the diet. Okay, I was trying to do this um, paleo diet and I go, wow, I'm finding it incredibly difficult. So I came up with the nuts as the bread and the, the meat like tuna or boiled eggs and nuts and I thought I really don't like that I like a sandwich so I thought just eat a lettuce wrap for lunch and then on the way over here it popped into my mind my kid had an allergy and the doctor said give him I was always lucky I had these really good doctors I think that's why I'm so healthy, my son and I. And so he said, feed your kid uh, lamb, green beans, potatoes, and carrots. And, and I did, and, he, and uh, soy milk. And he told me, you're the only person who has ever followed my uh, instructions. And I go, that's because I cannot stand my kid to be sick. And believe me, he did not really like lamb. And I thought, well, that is doable on the Palatar, I mean, Palatar, that's a good stock, by the way, on the Paleo diet, because you just have meat, sweet potatoes, green beans, and carrots. So the green beans are a green vegetable, and the carrots are a yellow vegetable, and then drink some kind of milk. And on the Paleo diet, you can have almond milk. And I was resistant to this. I'm only doing it every other day. And I go, just drink some almond milk. Don't make yourself miserable. Just buy some lamb. I mean, some sweet potatoes. Probably the best is white meat chicken and white meat fish. But I'm, I'm not giving up my beef and pork yet. So, um, and in my food storage, I have green beans. I have uh, potatoes, I have carrots, I have sweet potatoes, I have corn. So if you have all that in your in your uh, food storage, and I buy corn, I buy cans, they're indestructible pretty much. And then all you have to do is buy meat, and you know you need about 10 pounds of meat per month, which is not too bad. You can buy cheap meat. And then, you know, you're going to protect your health. So this has been a long video, but that's okay. You guys can clean your kitchen while you're listening to this. That's why I listened to James Casbolt. I was cleaning yesterday and I was listening to his videos. That, I, I happen to like some of the stuff he has to say. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all.